How are YouTube? Prince Machiavelli with episode 9 of the prologue. We've just taken out some rebels to help uh, the Roman Eastern Roman Empire out. And I'm hoping that they give us a chance to settle here because money's not looking great at the moment. Um, yeah, I probably could disband one of these armies at least. Um, but I'll just wait one more turn and see what happens. These two have been building settlement buildings. Um, I wonder what that symbol... That crown symbol means. It's, I mean, I know he's a faction leader, but I'm just wondering why it's orange. And all our politics are still looking fine. Anyway. So you can actually end up building some pretty impressive units. I mean, Phallix, I mean, that's the best that I can get right now. Um, so yeah, a bit of an interesting mechanic that uh, we just fought a, a battle that I almost derped here. Um, but it gave us some uh, level ups. Integrity is quite good. And then here. Oh, cool. Alright, so we haven't really been looking at this, but we've got, obviously got a huge pool of things here that we can. Um, what are the companions that we can put in? The jeweled Minsa, what on earth is that? Mm, the jeweled Minsa, sounds good. Let's see what this guy's. He's our faction leader, so let's give him an... I was going to say an epic poet, but that gives us research rate. Actually, now let's give him the poet. We can use the research rate for uh, um, governor when we get one. And then actually level this guy's skills up. This is plus five food, that's pretty useful. Reduction construction costs, I think that'll be useful as well. Alright, let's see what the Eastern Um Oh, that's called good enough fight. Nice. Let's see what the Eastern Roman Empire does. I wonder if this area recovers, or how the recovery mechanic works. If you remember when we formed a horde, it just torched everything we own, pretty much. Oh! Some rebels took Adrianople. Adrianople falls to the rebels, chieftain. Perhaps this is our chance to find a new home for ourselves. Sounds good to me. Before the Romans send an army to reclaim it. So you guys, I think, have finished building now, haven't you? Yeah. Start marching forward. And they're still building. What have we got in here? It's like quite a big army. Hmm. I'm going to put them in camp. Wait for these two to finish and use them to take Adrianople. Who said a spy? Oh, I forgot about him. He's pretty useless anyway. I think he's got two left hands or something. Right. 
Let's make sure we haven't missed any stuff here. Nice. So, we're actually starting to make a little bit more money, or we'll lose a little bit less, if you want to look at it, because of these buildings. Um, still not looking great. I don't think we can really afford to build anything there, because then we'll be pushing into negative. And really, we just have to wait one more turn, and then these guys will... These guys will be there. And they're a pretty good, pretty good couple of armies. So this is, yeah, that's what I was saying. So, if you look at these two units, the way that the tech works is you, you, you research military tech, and then that changes units. So you start getting Germanic warband replaces Germanic band. And then I think somewhere phallic men replace Germanic warband and so on. Yeah, here, Phallic So what that means is that you become unable to recruit the predecessor units, and then you've got the predecessors still in your army, but if you upgrade them, obviously they're gone. And if you compare these two, they're obviously meant to be used for very different things. Much higher melee damage for the Phallic Melee attack is higher on the warband. Um, melee defense is higher on the warband. So really, everything's higher except um, melee damage. So these guys are shock troops. They're not going to last as long. They've got no armor. These guys have fairly decent armor. I mean, 25 is not great, but these guys have got higher health. So to me, you would use these in completely different situations, but you upgrade, and suddenly you don't have heavy sword infantry anymore. So I think that's a really weird mechanic. I'm hopeful that CA will think about it and maybe decide whether it's it's the best best way to have the unit development reflected. I think a lot of people would much rather have um, the option uh, of more units to field. But anyway, it's just thoughts. And the other thing I just noticed as well is that I don't know if any, anyone ever plays the Caesar and Gaul expansion pack for Rome 2, but uh, in that you had two lines of tech, one which was just used as research and one which you paid money for, and it looks like they've brought the idea of paying money back, which I think is quite cool. Um, you know, if, you, if you're profitable, it's a good way to uh, invest in something nice and quickly rather than waiting 20 turns. Um, but yeah, let's just see what we want to research here. Um, I think we need to keep going with Civic. The money's, yeah, not great. Well, oh, you guys can raid all you want. Let's see if we can take Adrian Novel. Ready for orders. For the tribe. So these buildings should all be finished. And looks like we're gonna have to fight these guys here first. Just gonna bring everyone out. So, let's just think about this. I have these guys as the reinforcing army. These guys as the primary army. Can we really not attack them? Ah, oh, this is frustrating. This is what I hate about this circle of influence idea. There's no reason why these armies shouldn't be able to march down here, just because there's a crappy little mini army here. 
the way it should be done is that if a unit, if an army passes through your circle of influence, then they have the option of um, intercepting. If they don't intercept, they stand there, the army moves past, they don't have to engage, they're still there, but, you know, they, they decide that then they can't get involved in the fight or whatever. Right now, because this little army's here, I have to march all the way around rather than coming through here. So I'm actually going to just quickly save this. I've been meaning to make a video about this for a while. Um, and that's probably a good place to demonstrate how annoying it is. So sorry, I'm just going off on a rant. I was thinking about this last night because I read something on the forums where it's just... Someone was just talking about the same kind of thing and it's just... it's absurd. Anyway. So let's just see. Oh, yeah, okay, we've got to go around. Very well. Let's go around then. Let's make sure they're both within range. Yeah. Okay, so they're both within range. We're pretty much out of money here. Um, I might have to disband this army. I still don't think it'll be enough, but... Yeah, let's do it. There we go. At least we're not losing money now. And a little spy can keep running on down. Yeah, it's just such a weird feature. I can understand that it may be applying for forts um, or something like that where you've got a narrow strategic path so the fort's in the way and the enemy have to attack it to get through and then it's fine but that guy's not fortified or anything, he's just standing there in the forest. Days grow shorter and the winds blow colder. Soon the snows shall arrive, and an army caught in open country in winter will surely suffer. Okay. Thirsty for battle. So let's do this. We take the settlements for the tribe. So we could do a night attack, but. I think what we'll do instead is just circle. And we will bring these guys through. And just swap. Um, swap a couple of units around. So we can have some more useful um, units initially for the assault. And then we can bring in the reinforcements. I'm actually going to attack. Alright, let's do it. Uh, don't feel like waiting. And we're running out of food, so... What have they got? Legio... Limitane bodyguards... Lots of slingers... Palatina... So I was going to say we've probably got the amount of gun, but we only just do. And we've got the catapults, which is useful. Alright, let's do it. <clears throat> I don't know what happens if, uh, <clears throat> if I lose. Battle of Adrianople. Play 
found some crossbows now as well. I've seen videos where people activate fire ammunition, barrage, and precision shot, and they just destroy anything. The only thing I haven't seen it done against is a unit of legionaries and testudo. Testudo seems to be very effective. Oh, I've actually got two different types of siege engine as well, I didn't even realise that. That's what they've got. And I'm not fighting in the fog again. Light artillery. Onager. You always... What's the difference? There's one a... I don't know. Maybe one's a mercenary one. Why is there a pin up there? Pinned unit. What does that mean? Ah, oh, okay. I see. So that's to do with what your uh, okay. when you compare your unit types. Okay, so this actually looks like a pretty tough settlement to assault. I don't know if we can actually break these walls. I got a feeling we won't be able to. Which means they're really restricted to a few fronts. Um, our reinforcements are coming in from this side. So I might deploy the army, say, down here. And that should give a nice long road for the commanders to shoot down. Don't think the enemy is going to be able to run into this area too well, um, but we'll see soon enough. Alright, start setting some things up. Alright, so these guys have precision, they have barrage, and then they have flaming as well, which is pretty cool. before I forget. And then we'll form up our line of spearmen. That's the range of the tower, so it's pretty long ranged. And then we'll form up that line of heavy swordsmen. Or medium, whatever these guys are. Medium. And then slingers, just keeping them separate because they don't have flaming, and I know I'll end up derping it with units if I'm trying to fire with non flaming and flaming units at the same time. Sure, I might just leave one unit out there to protect them. Alright. So these guys should increase to reload. Does it actually change their this their base? Oh, it doesn't seem to be changing their base stats, I don't know. Oh there we go. Wow, okay. Yeah, that's huge. That's a big difference. Should we start off firing at their um their onages? Oh, looks like they're coming forward. 
Manchesters and take courage for today. Oh, I better start running this guy's forward a bit. Oh gee, there goes one of my energy units already. Oh, there goes another one. Wow. Alright, I need to go for that one as well. Going. And Balge. So they're almost actually pretty high. I'm not doing anything against those. No, uh, you guys aren't on skirmish mode. I keep forgetting they don't start off in skirmish mode. Sorry, I'm not going to be quiet, but this is actually quite intense. There we go. Have we done any damage to this energy yet? Okay, we've taken out two of them. That's good. That's a start. the general. Son. Oh, I was starting to get a, a little bit of a rock going, which is good. Oh, they're just charging for it. That's cool. No objection to you guys doing that. That's fine with me.
Alright, now I've got to open up on these things, I think. unit way too close. Right. Well, our archers are just kicking uh, Adrianople. I'm going to stop these um, whatever they're called, slingers, I mean, onagers. Start moving forward. And reform. These guys, I'm just gonna form up into an AI group. Um, double line sorted, that'll do. There we go. What do I think I've left? I wonder what fire actually does, aside from damaging settlements, but it's cool that it spreads. Understand what's left. I get some kills with these light cavalry. Well, they do get they do take a lot of damage from those towers. Wow, they got rolled. Get drilled, I think. That's alright. Turn these guys off water. <laughs> Trees and everything burning. This is just awesome. Not fire is spreading. Oh man, this game is fun. Some damage. That tower's almost done, I think. There we go. So, what's my actual objective? Oh, hang on. What the? Oh, right. Okay. Jeez, I didn't even see that. Well, they got my onages. So busy focused on the pretty fire that I lost sight of things. Man, that sucks. It's probably gonna be three units of oranges that I just lost. After all the good work they did as well. Now we can do position shot again. There we go. We'll probably do barrage as well. Yep. Enemy 
Oh, there we go. See how crossbows did. That's what I'm curious about. Okay, well, they did better than archers. Um, I know that, you know, maybe there were, there were some units I should have been using standard against, and some left flaming was the right choice. I don't know. See, these, these guys do so well that I don't actually want to upgrade them to the Phalanx men. And that's what, I, what the, the negative is about the, the way they've chosen to deal with things. So I lost the unit of managers. So what have I actually got? Can we see what they have in there? We're only getting 995 out of it, I think it's better just to occupy it, we get unit replacement. Our forces have captured Adrianople, Chieftain. The people have taken up lodgings where they can, and a functional council hall has been established. We should be able to rebuild here. All right, um, I'm going to leave that episode here, just trying to keep these nice and short. Um, but yeah, make sure you come and check back in. I hope you're enjoying at least my playthrough. Um, apparently something like 2% of people have actually done the prologue, so... There might be a reason for that. I'm enjoying it, and it's, I'm finding it good to learn how the game works, and I hope you're getting something out of it too. Just let me know if you aren't, or if you are, or whatever. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, make sure you remember to hit subscribe. Catch you all soon. Prince Mackie Valley.